right, we'll go ahead and get started with today's press conference with Auburn head coach Brian Harson. We'll let coach make some opening remarks, and then we will take questions. Coach, whenever you're ready. All right, looking forward to conference week and uh, getting a chance to go back on the road, play a really good LSU team. Uh, just from the last game, uh, some of our players of the game on offense was TJ Finley. Our defensive player of the game was Jacoby McClain. Uh, and that says a lot about his play coming in um, for the half that he did. Played very well. Special teams was Anders Carlson. Uh, our old lineman of the game was Broderius Ham, And then our D lineman of the game was Colby Wooden. And uh, those guys have all done a great job. It was um, a spirited practice on Sunday as far as guys getting back, getting to work, and uh, correcting the things from the previous game. Um, you know, and that's one of the things that you get to do each and every week is learn from the game you played. Uh, we were fortunate to win that game, and uh, we found a way. That was really the, the message there. And, you know, as you look at it across college football, um, half the teams wins, half the teams lose, and you got to find a way. And there's plenty of things for us to clean up, and I feel like everybody in that team meeting uh, is willing to do that. And so the preparation has begun. Uh, started Sunday night. Uh, these guys are working through things they have to do academically and then certainly get themselves ready for this week and our practice on Tuesday. Um, we made a change at the wide receiver position and uh, Cornelius Williams, first of all, uh, you know, he's a good man and, and did a very good job for us, showed up every day and worked uh, very professional. And uh, I felt like uh, for us now moving forward in uh, things, not just at the wide receiver position, but, but for our staff and, and some of the things that we feel we need to do and I felt we need to do, we made a change. And so um, you know, I appreciate everything that, that he did for us while he was here. Uh, I appreciate his family. And you know he's a good young coach and certainly looking forward to you know things that will happen for him in the future. And uh, I'm excited about Eric Keesaw, who's going to be um, working with the wide receivers now and, and uh, brings a lot of knowledge to that position, has coached it. For many years, uh, has been an offensive coordinator at Boise State, at Colorado, at Washington. Um, has been around for a while. Understands offense. Understands uh, developing and understands the, the, that position in particular. And a guy that I've worked with uh, and has done a good job over the years. And so he's getting uh, a chance to get in there and um, did yesterday to work with those wide receivers, um, to work with the offense now with some of the game planning and then obviously being on the field and able to help those guys uh, continue to grow and develop. And, and for this team, uh, like every other coach on this staff, we all need to be doing that. Um, we all need to improve, which is always our goal every single week. How do we continue to keep getting better? That's been a message since we started um, back in December when we were putting the staff together. So uh, looking forward to him uh, getting out there and working with those guys and, and uh, you know what we're able to do this week as we put together the game plan on the offensive side. And uh, that's an area we know we got to do a better job, especially in the red zone. We know we have to score touchdowns. Uh, one thing about last game, I thought Anders did a great job of, of keeping us in the game. Uh, our special team showed up and we were able to make a play. And so Kalen Newton uh, with the block, that was big for us in that game. We were able to recover in the end zone. And so there were some things that we did really well on special teams to help um, keep us in the game and give us a chance to win it. Uh, the last drive, TJ did a great job. Everybody on that drive um, executing, and it came down to a fourth down and goal. And we were able to pull it out and finish it off with a two-point and, and uh, put the game in, in a position where we could win it. So we learned from that. And we take all the, the games that we played into this week and all the things that we've been working on, and we go back to the fundamentals of playing good football, go back to the techniques that we need in order to be successful this week. And LSU is very good. Uh, I've got a chance to watch them a little bit even prior to this game uh, because they're on TV, and so you see LSU playing. And Coach Ogeron's done a very good job, uh, very successful uh, with that program, obviously has won a national championship. And offensively, um, you know, I think the quarterback is playing well. Max Johnson's a very good player. Uh, you can see that, that he's, he's getting better um, and has done some very good things. they got a, uh, some wide receivers that all are very good, very talented, uh, and they play hard. Their offensive line is very good. 
So all around on the offensive side, you just you see a lot of very good players. You see a system that uh, these guys are, are doing a very good job in, and um, you know we have to we have to be ready for that on the defensive side. Their defense, um, they're number one in the SEC in sacks. These guys have, have done a very good job up front. Um, they got returning starters. They got guys in the front seven that have played that are very good and uh, have shown that through the games they played. Um, and so that's going to be a challenge for us. Um, you know, we've got to find a way to run it. We've got to find a way to protect the passer. We've got to find ways that, that we can do things on the offensive side so that we can move the ball. Um, we can be explosive at times when we need to be. We can get uh, ourselves in the red zone again and then score, put the ball in the end zone. Special teams have been solid all the way around for LSU. Um, that's an area there that, that's, uh, you know, it's going to be a good challenge for us as we prepare ourselves on special teams. And I do feel like this team uh, and Coach Watts and the, all the coaches that are involved on special teams are doing a really good job of, of getting uh, ourselves in a position to, to be successful on special teams, to try to make plays, to try to do things in the game where we can hopefully have an impact and make a difference. So uh, back to work, watching a lot of film today. Um, Hopefully we have players in this week. They're studying and they're spending time on getting prepared for LSU. And we have a great week of practice. Uh, that's always the goal. Uh, that'll start on Tuesday and we'll get ourselves back to work and, um, and be ready to go out there. And then, you know, just as far as, um, you know, as we get into conference play, I think that's the fun part for everybody. You have your non-conference games and those are very important. Those are very valuable because you want to win every single game but you get into conference play it becomes fun every every week is is an opportunity to go out there and, and play a team that you're most likely going to play again um, so there's history with these teams and guys that have played against each other and I think that's something as a competitor you look forward to every year you have a chance to play in these games um, our challenge is going on the road again and and finding a way to win and being in an environment that's going to be loud and hostile and uh, all the things that we got a chance to experience, some at Penn State, uh, but now you get into conference play. Uh, I've never played there. I've been asked that several times. Uh, I've heard plenty of stories from the players and coaches that have played there. And so I'm looking forward to, as we go through this week, uh, getting a chance to be there. And it's a night game and uh, playing in a great environment and uh, getting our guys out there and, and hopefully playing our best football. And that's really the goal every single week play good football and prepare yourself to do that. So. Um, it's going to be a good week. It's going to be a good week for us to, to really hone in on a lot of things that we know that we're going to get better at. And what I like about this team is they want to. Uh, they have that desire to. And, you know, right now it's, it's just a matter of putting together some really good days as we head into this, this, this game against LSU and, um, and this week and get into conference play. So with that, questions? Our first question is from Ryan Hennessy. Coach, going with uh, T.J. Finley uh, at the end of the game there, do you anticipate him getting the start? Or are you going to go back to Bo, or has that kind of not been decided yet? That has not been decided yet. And, you know, I know, uh, you know depth charts come out. Uh, you know, depth charts are uh, – it's a little bit old school because so many things change uh, throughout the week and all that. So that stuff for me is um, – you know, doesn't really impact anything that we're going to do this week. What we're going to do this week is, is we're going to get our quarterbacks prepared today and tomorrow morning, so they're ready to go for a Tuesday practice. We're going to go out there and have a Tuesday practice. Um, I said at the end of the game, I'm very proud of TJ. What what I'm proud, and, and I'll talk about Bo here. What I'm proud um, of TJ for doing is having himself ready, and that's one thing as a backup quarterback. Um, you get yourself ready every single week like you're the starter, and sometimes you don't play. you got to do it again. So it's, it's, there's a mental toughness to playing quarterback and being a backup because you never know when your time's coming, and you have to be ready. And sometimes maybe it's three or four games. You haven't played much. You haven't really had some significant playing time, so maybe I'm not going to do as much this week as I did the week before. Maybe I'm not going to get in. And so you just start to slack on some of that preparation and he didn't do that I thought he was ready and he came in the game he was he was poised um, plenty of things for TJ to work on as well and I think he'll be the first to admit that we got to get better in these areas and, and that's the beauty of going back to work uh, and getting yourself uh, better prepared and, and playing better so you got to perform in practice at the quarterback position to do that uh, 
So he, he had himself ready to go. Well, that would be no different. You always need to prepare like you're the starter. Um, Bo in the game, I made the change. I said that. Uh, I made that change. And, um, you know, he wants to be out there. That's the thing I love about Bo. Bo's a hard worker. He's a competitor, and he's that way all the time. It never changes. He's always been driven like that. And I fully expect that he's going to get himself ready and have a great week of practice and then take what we learned in the last game, apply it to this game. And um, so both those guys, you know, they need to be ready to go. Uh, Both those guys get the majority of the reps anyhow throughout the week. Uh, They all get different scenarios. You know, we we have those guys mixing and matching with the starters throughout practice already. And, you know, we'll go into Tuesday and, and we'll see how they operate, and we'll see how we're operating as an offense. And, and really, that position is extremely important, but everybody on the offensive side knows that we need to find ways to put the ball in the end zone. I mean, we're there to score. That's the goal of the offense is to score touchdowns. And we, we move the ball, and we're kicking field goals. We have got to score. And it's been a while since we've scored some touchdowns um, like we want to. Uh, we're not consistent enough in that area. Uh, from the last couple games, and so that's a major focus. Like we have got to practice uh, with that mentality that when you get down in the red zone, you know you're smelling blood. You want to get in the end zone. You want to score touchdowns. That's that's what you do on the offensive side, and that's really the goal we have every single drive. So uh, both those guys will be ready to go. Both those guys will prepare. Um, both those guys uh, did a great job on Sunday. They came out. They worked hard. They were focused. And like I said before, it's no different than every other position. Have yourself ready to play. And what that means for everybody is have yourself ready to practice Tuesday so we can get ready to play for Saturday. Justin Hokinson. Hey, Brian. Um, was there a, a tipping point for, for, for you in making the change with, with, with Cornelius Williams? And, and have you ever made a change four games into a season on, on your coaching staff? Uh, have you ever, you ever had to go through something like that? And is, was there a tipping point? Was there something that said, okay, I've got to do this? Um, I, I wouldn't say a tipping point, but there was obviously a decision made that I, I felt like that was what we needed. And no, I haven't done that. Um, and it's not ideal. I understand that. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't take that lightly. It's, you know, it impacts a lot of things. And so uh, I'm aware of that. And, and like I said, it was just, you know, what I felt like, um, you know, we needed to do over time that just uh, was going to be something that, you know, I feel like can help us as we move forward um, in that room and in that, uh, at that position. And then obviously for the future is, you know, we continue to, to keep building this program. And so, um, you know, what I think is, uh, you know, Coach Keysaw has, has got a lot of knowledge and, and has done a very good job at that position. I've got a chance to see it, but no, there was there was no there's no incident. There's there's nothing like that. There's nothing that um, you know. Like I said, um, Coach Williams, um, I got a lot of respect for him, and he did a very good job for us while he was here uh, of showing up and working hard and and doing those type of things. But I felt like you know, in order for us to to continue to progress, like I feel like we need to. Um, that change needed to be made, and, and it needed to be made now. And and so I made that decision. And so, um, but I also understand that you know, for coaches and players, you know, you have relationships with guys that are on your staff or on your team. And when when people are no longer a part of your program, that's not easy. Um, and you know, I, what we have to do now is you know, the decision was made. We got to move forward, and we have to now give ourselves the best opportunity uh, with the people in place to, to go out there and, and play really good football and be a team that can go in and compete and and be a type of team that can play for championships. Those are the things that we all want to do. And so I felt like that was the right decision for us moving forward. Christian Clemente. Brian, Coach Kisa, you talked about him a little bit. What does he really bring to that room to help the wide receivers moving forward? I mean, they've struggled a little bit early on. So what can he do to help that room out? Well, I I think, you know, right now it's, it's, we got to go to work and we did some on Sunday. We got to go to work on Tuesday. I I know I worked with Eric, with coach Keesaw, 
uh, as an offensive coordinator at Boise State, as the wide receiver coach, uh, known him and known of him for a long time, and uh, a little bit in that coaching circle. And you know, one of the things he's a very good teacher. Uh, he understands what what we want to do. He understands um, you know how we want to do it, and he understands why we're doing what we're doing. And so I think he brings um, that experience and a level of teaching that. I feel like can improve our room and help those guys uh, understand what it is that, that they're trying to accomplish every play. Uh, I think he's a good technician. You know, he's a very good coach. He's, he's very detailed. Um, that would be the one thing I would describe him as. He's a very detailed coach. He has a plan. He has a vision. He has um, things that I know we'll do at the wide receiver position that will help us improve. Uh, and at the same time, I also know that you know, every player on this team, that's that's a standard that we all have got to live up to is, you know, every single week we have to get better. It doesn't get easier. That's one of the beauties of, of football. As the season goes on, it doesn't get easier. You should get better. That's that's how it should be. And, you know, there's there's not less time spent getting yourself better. You, you got to sacrifice a lot. You got to spend a tremendous amount of time in order to have yourself physically ready to play, mentally ready to play uh, every single day. And I think uh, Coach Keesaw brings that to the table. He understands that. Um, he's always done a very good job uh, since I've been with him as far as just having his guys and having himself prepared and ready. Um, and, and knowing you know, also just, just what it is we're trying to accomplish on the offensive side. And, and I think he's a competitor. I think he's, he's very driven, motivated. Uh, for the job that he does, and so you know that brings something to our staff as well that can help not only just our players but our staff moving forward on the offensive side that um, I feel like is going to be a positive for us, you know, as we continue this season. Jordan Hill, Brian Max Johnson for LSU's coming off a four touchdown game. Just what has sort of stood out to you about him, and what do you feel like your defense needs to do to make him uncomfortable and Saturday? Well, I'm not quite sure where he's got all this kind of moxie and stuff from. I don't know if his dad played in the NFL or anything like that, or he's been around the position for a while. Uh, he's a he's a really good player. He's he's a really good player, and I think the guys around him are playing good. I think he's improved as the season's gone on, and that's what that's what good players do. You get better as the season goes on. I think he's a competitor. And, you know, I don't know their system. I don't know everything that he's being taught, but you see a guy that's improved and you see a guy playing the quarterback position well. And you know, I think he, he understands it. You know, you can tell that there's, there's something about him that he understands, you know, what it takes to play that position. You know, I think he makes some good decisions. Um, so he's, you know, he's a guy that, that has impressed me as I watched him. And I haven't spent a ton of time other than today getting a chance to really see him and dive into that. So by the end of the week, I'll know a lot more about him. And I'll know, you know, as we obviously go face him, you know, when you get to see him live, you know, what kind of player he is. But uh, he and the other players on the offense, it's not him. They got really good wide receivers. Uh, they got an offensive line uh, that's done a good job. Uh, so really good player, Ingram. You know, um, on the offensive line, their guard. I mean, this guy's a national award candidate. Um, number one, Case Sean. This guy, this guy can go. He's a he's a really good player, and there's other guys around him as well. So, you can see that you know they've done they've done some things really well on the offensive side. He's a guy that um, you know Max is a guy that's that's leading the charge right there, and um, you know we got to get prepared for that. So our defense and, and everybody on that side of the ball has to be ready to go against a really good offense. Jason Caldwell. You talked about kind of this week in, in practice with the quarterbacks. Um, do you have to change anything um, with these guys to kind of tailoring game plan if it's different, or are they kind of you kind of do the pretty much the same thing with both guys? No, we, we got to change something just in general. I mean, that's just let's start with that. We got to change some things just in general so that we can put points on the board. That's number one. So it doesn't really have to do with any particular player yet. But we have to we have to change some things so that we can be more uh, productive when we get down in the red zone and we can score touchdowns. Bottom line, and we can score touchdowns from anywhere on the field. Like I said, it can be wherever we can be backed up and score from 80 yards. That's okay too. We just need to find ways to put the ball in the end zone. Touchdowns are what's going to win us games, and 
you know, we all know that. So, you know, there's a lot of things that just from an offensive standpoint that I know that we're going to work hard at getting better at and we're going to change. Um, and then as far as the, the quarterback positions go, no, it's, it's really um, people have asked before, like, do you have two game plans? That's impossible. You, you only have you have three days really of just uh, work against scout teams. You got this Friday that you're going to clean some things up. So you got to you have to have a game plan for everybody to execute, not just two guys that might be, you know, in a position at quarterback that one guy's game plan, another guy's game plan. Um, you got to have the game plan, and you got to have it so that you can play the very best against a really good LSU defense. That's what you have to do. So that's what you know our staff is putting together right now. That's what's it's going to look like throughout the week. And then, you know, those, those quarterbacks, Bo and TJ, are going to go out there and operate it. And I know those guys are going to do it at a high level. I know the other guys, the O-line, the tight ends, the running backs, um, you know, they're going to be very aware of what they have to do. And they're going to be focused on doing their job. And then, you know, we'll see how the week of practice goes. But that's that's the, the thing that I really enjoy is is a lot of what everybody sees is on Saturdays. That's really all you see. You see our performance on Saturday. That's what we get judged on every Saturday. And and I'm looking for, you know, what are we doing on Tuesday? Because that really tells me a lot about where we're going that week as far as our game plan. There's always overage as you go into it. Like, all right, you have a certain amount of plays, and as the game, or the, excuse me, the week goes on, you, know, you pare that down to be specific for this is what we're going to use in the game. Here's the things that we're, we're – uh, operating well and you know as a player like you want it all like there's good stuff in there you want it all to go well because you don't want that to be thrown out but if it doesn't go well it gets thrown out and um you know i hope our team you know is understanding that in in all three phases like guys we gotta we gotta be ready because we have some good ideas here now let's go execute them in practice take it serious um make sure that you know, if we're on special teams, we have got 11 guys on the field. We've had a couple times we've had 10 guys on the field. Well, that, that comes back to just a lack of focus. And, and it's got to be where it's so ingrained in what we're doing every single day that come game time, when there's a lot of other external factors happening, we're locked in and that those things aren't going to distract us from being out there and, and ready to go when our play is called, when our number is called. So, you know, that's that's really got to be our focus. We're just we're working through that. We're working through what it really takes to prepare to be the type of team that we all want to be. That's the sacrifice and that's the standards that we have to have for ourselves that that we uphold every single day for us to go out there and and play really good football on Saturday. And right now, um, you know, we had a good Sunday. All right, today needs to go well. This week needs to go well and and avoid the distractions and just have ourselves um, prepared to go out there and and do what we have to do this week in practice. Brian Stoltz. Brian, I know this is your first time coaching at LSU, but maybe in a series, maybe in this series more than any other, games tend to go unusual, strange, odd ways. Uh, How do you prepare your team for that, especially going down to – Baton Rouge and eight o'clock start with those fans and uh, you know, whether it's going to be a fire or missed field goals or interceptions and stuff like that. Uh, How are you going to handle that and, you know, prepare your team for, you know, something that might be crazy going on. You say there might be a fire. Is that what you said? There was a fire back in uh, 96 in uh, Auburn. outside the stadium. I don't, don't, hell, I don't know on that one. Um, uh, I don't have a stage of fire. But I need to get some history on that. I've, I've gotten a lot of, of, of stories from people that have been a part of this program and, and in this game. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be all those things that we kind of talked about a few weeks ago. It's going to be all that and then some. Um, I don't know all the, the weird stuff that you're talking about necessarily, but I, I do know where you're coming from. And um, 8 o'clock game, be ready to play. It's later than what we played, so that part of it. We need to make sure as the day goes on, that's that's part of Saturdays. You get to kind of lay around and do your walkthroughs. And, you know, after a while, it's let's get ready to play. And so, you know, guys have to have that frame of mind. We're focused. We're not tight. And when it's time to start getting prepared, we get to that pregame meal, you really, really lock yourself in so that you have yourself ready to play. And 
Um, you know, all those things, what you're saying, I mean, I don't know what's going to come up, but we just got to respond to whatever happens. That's what we can control. We can work on some of the negative things or some of the distractions or, or you know, I'm not saying a fire, but, but uh, certainly some of the other stuff that may come up in the game that we can have ourselves prepared for. And I think a lot of that, that that's just a lot of your mentality. A lot of that is is that discipline that you have through the week to stay focused on what's important and then you know, have that mindset. Like, there's going to be some bad things. There's going to be, I don't know, we talked about it before, the plane, the, the hotel, the bus, whatever it is, it, it's not all perfect. It doesn't go exactly how you want it to. Good. Take that as, uh, you know, and it kind of just take that adversity and feed off of it. Um, and when you go on the road, I think that's something that you should expect when you go on the road. There's going to be adversity, so good. What do we do now? This gives us some, another opportunity to challenge ourselves in a different way, not even on the field with some of that stuff, in a different way where we have to overcome it. Some, some people really like that. Um, some people don't. Uh, if you're going to be a good football team and, and win your games on the road, you better learn to like that. You better learn to to be able to handle those things. And when something goes bad, good. Let's make sure that we're we're going to handle it properly and, and uh, every single one of us does that. Um, but I don't know. There, there's, Like you said, I'll, I'll probably now go back and look at maybe some of the crazy things that happened. And I don't know. We'll put it on the checklist and read it off. And I'm sure the players will look at me sideways on some of that but say, hey, if this, if this happens, let's be ready for it and let's go out and have a great day. Mark Murphy. Yeah, Coach Orgeron mentioned today when they play Auburn, they always expect a physical game. And I've seen a lot of these games, and they've almost always been physical. Is that what you're expecting Saturday night? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I expect us to play physical, and I expect them to play physical. Um, you know, it's an SEC ball game and uh, two good teams. You know, we got to travel there. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're working on trying to be a good football team. But – um, if it's not, it's very obvious. When you go play, if there's there's one team that's not physical, it's very obvious in that game um, who's going to have a, a, the upper hand. So you you got to train that way. You got to you got to believe and think that way about yourself as a player. Uh, and I think that's the beauty of, of playing. Like you put pads and helmets on to go be physical. That's what you do. You you can compete in a lot of other things. I think you know it's not just about hey you're a competitor. Those type of and you can compete in a lot of different ways. Go compete in pickleball if you want to, but when you throw the pads on and, and you throw the helmet on and all that, I mean it's to go be physical. That's why you play this game. So there's all those other components, but that's the beauty of football. Put your thigh pads on, get your shoulder pads, helmet on, and go be physical and be, you know, that kind of player because that's what helps you win games. And when you got 11 guys doing that consistently, then you got something. You got something that. Um, you know, you can go out there and, and really set the tone and, and be a team that um, has an advantage when you can play physical. And you got to be tough. You got to you got to have fight in you, and you got to want those things. And you know, we got players on this team that do. And we we got to make sure that we have more that continue to want to do that and play like that. And we're capable of it. You just got to you got to turn it on. You got to play for three and a half hours in a physical ball game and and. Um, so I agree with that, and uh, I know that LSU is a physical football team from what I've seen. So, you know, we get ourselves ready to go and just and just know what to, know we're getting ready to go play against. And then, you know, really it's about us. You know, how are we going to play? How are we going to come out there and, and for four quarters, how are we going to play and what we're going to do? And, um, you know, don't flinch. Don't flinch. Coach, our last question today is from J.G. Tate. Hey, Brian, uh, listen, some of us were down at LSU in 2001. I got, we got mooned by Santa Claus. So, I mean, there's been some crazy things that have happened oh, down there. I'm said, telling you. you know what? I, got, I got mooned by Santa Claus. I mean, Jason did too. So, I mean, that happened. Okay. All right. I'm just telling you, you got to prepare for anything. Listen, I do have a but question, though. The game, though. <laughs> I do what, have a question. The game? I, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. What, what day was the game? That was the year that it got delayed due to 9-11, so it was like December 10th or something like that. It was uh, so, yeah. so right around Santa Claus time. I guess that's why he was there. Yeah. I don't think that was actually him, though. It may have been a proxy. Yeah, it uh, seemed a little early. 
Yes. Uh, I do have a question, though, honestly, uh, about Corn. kind of going back to that a little bit. I know that's going to be a big shock both to the wideouts and to a lot of the players on the team. Is that kind of part of what goes into the decision like that, where you're going to kind of have that shock to the system and kind of let everybody know that, hey, we've got to do something different, and, and I'm going to show how serious I'm about doing that? Not at all. No, that does not – that did not cross my mind that – uh, you make a decision like that to make a point. Um, so, no, that that's not what, you know, some of those decisions are. I mean, this is, you know, it's about people. And, um, you know, it's about things that I felt like, you know, we needed to do. But it's really about the whole idea that this, this program is built off of is that we continue to get better. That's That's really what it was about. We got to get better. And so it was not to send a message to do anything like that. That's, that's never, you, you don't make decisions like that. At least I don't believe you make decisions like that uh, as a head football coach. So you can just go out there and just send a message. All right, you make calculated decisions that you feel like are best for the team. Um, I think that's a selfish way to look at it, uh, if that's the case. Um, there's a lot of different ways to impact a football team and make a point if you really have to make a point, um, uh, and, and it's not like that. What this was was just about um, where I felt like as far as our football program is right now um, and what we feel like we have to do moving forward to be the type of program that, that we want to be and that we're working to be and that we will be, um, that was a decision that, um, you know, that I made. And, you know, right now, as we move forward, um, I believe in Coach Keysaw, and I believe he's going to come in and, and he can help us. And I believe that uh, the guys in that team room, uh, we're all human, and none of those things are fun. At the same time, we also know that, you know, we've got to get back to work and that we've got to focus on the things that are, are important for this team to continue to succeed. And that's that includes me and everybody that's in this program. So it's not just... Never, it's never one particular person. It's never one particular player. This is a team sport, and everybody's involved in that. So, um, but no, I don't. I, I don't look at that decision um, whatsoever like that. I look at it as um, you know something that you know we had to do in order for us to to do some of the things that that we've talked about back in December as we put this staff together, put this program in place, and said this is what we're going to do. And here are the standards, and these are the things that you know we expect moving forward. All right, coach. Thanks for your time today. Okay, thank you.